Hello, hello guys, <clears throat> and welcome to another Facebook Live event. Uh, there's been a trending topic today, and it's been the issue of whether or not um, we should give title deeds to the rural population in Zimbabwe because they comprise about 70% uh, of the population. So 70% of the population is located in the rural areas of Zimbabwe and uh, they do not have title deeds to the piece of land where they live. And so there was an argument as to whether uh, they should be provided title or they should not be provided title. There are reasons against the provision of title and there are reasons or arguments against the provision of uh, title deeds. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a question of whether we want to keep uh, the rural population outside of the mainstream uh, economy in which they are not participating. And so what we are saying when we say that we don't want to give them title deeds is to exclude them um, economically. So not only are they included economically, but financially as well. There's financial exclusion of those people and there is economic exclusion of those people. Now, I was looking at um, in fact, because I've been talking about Bitcoin and the blockchain, I thought, let me look up and see if there are applications. In fact, I knew there were applications of blockchain um, in property or in, um, uh, in land registry. And I just thought, let me look up uh, some of these articles so that you can see what is happening in other countries. So things are happening the blockchain which is basically a way of recording um, of recording information okay in a way in which it is not only decentralized but it is also secure it is safe as long as obviously the inputs themselves are done correctly so one of the problems we could have with a blockchain uh, information on the blockchain is if it is deliberately um, put with error or if, if it is fraudulent at the point of entry and is accepted as correct then changing it might prove to be a little bit difficult because you need the consensus of the entire network of anyone who is involved uh, in within that, uh, that that blockchain okay so I'm just going to show you a few stories which you can read for yourself, obviously. And I've just got a few here which I've, I've kept in my pocket. So I'm using the pocket application. Let me just show you what it looks like. So this is the pocket application down here, which I'm using. And this Academy coin is one of the, one of the, uh, it's one of the cryptocurrencies which have been developed in the education sector. So as you can see, there are so many there are so many uses of the blockchain technology. And it's not just about Bitcoin. I know we are obsessed with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is making all the headlines. But we we the underlying technology is called the blockchain. And it is through the blockchain that we have applications such as academic coin. Um, and uh, Pocket is just a place where it's an application where I keep my, my, my links, the links that I find through the internet. So the way that I'm finding most of my information is if I, in fact, I've got uh, on, on, on my, um, I've got this uh, alert system on my, on my, um, my Twitter account. So I get updates. I get notified when there is any news on, about Bitcoin or blockchain. I get notified because I'm following those people who are in that industry. 
And then right now I'm using Ecamm Live uh, to broadcast uh, this, to enable me to broadcast this, okay? I could also use ScreenFlow, but ScreenFlow would not be live. I would need to get something else which is made by this same company. So anyway, this is the first story, and it's about securing your apartment now and diversify your investment portfolio. So purchase off plan to buy apartments with Bitcoin. So this organization is this Aston Plaza and, and residents. They are um, inviting people to buy Dubai apartments, which are still under construction. According to one report that I, I, I read earlier, uh, it's only 25% complete or according to that. I can't remember, but I think the date is not so long ago. It was 25% complete. So this is something which is still uh, going on. So over 370 apartments already sold. Bitcoin price packed to US dollar exchange rate as at 6th November 2017. So underpinning our strong commitment to the future of the cryptocurrency market and the Bitcoin community, we're offering an extra 5% discount, blah, 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 more information. Aston Plaza and Residence. So this is what you get for your investment. And this is the uh, the, this is what the apartments look like. So 144 apartments are still available. Don't miss out on this exclusive investment opportunity. But know that they are accepting payments in Bitcoin. And uh, you use the BitPay yeah, to, for the transaction to take place. So what's available is all of this. I mean, you can go through this. I'm not here to advertise this uh, opportunity, but just to talk about the fact that it is based on on Bitcoin and uh, they are only accepting Bitcoin for this. Okay, so that's one story. Things that are happening today. Um, so I'm going to go to another story now. All transactions in Dubai to be conducted through the, uh, let me see. I think there is uh, a bit more before that. Uh, I was looking at the plaza here. So Bitcoin, the future of property development, right? So this is the other story, right? So this one, it's also talking about the same uh, place in Dubai. So whether this form of crypto crypto based property development is here to stay depends entirely on the volatility of the cryptocurrency market. That being said, many experts, including Baroman and Baroness Moon, these are the people, the two people who are developing these properties, firmly believe Bitcoin is here to stay. It, indeed, it is the golden standard in cryptocurrency. So whether Bitcoin stays or not depends on how many people are using it. So this type of thing is part of the adoption of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, the digital currency underpinned by blockchain, has become one of the most talked about and media exposed subjects in the technology space. So the fact that I'm even talking about it and the fact that you're even listening to this is, um, is evidence that Bitcoin may be going mainstream bit by bit, okay? So if you have bought any Bitcoin, you're part of the reason why uh, the price of Bitcoin is going up because they can see that there is a lot of interest in the Bitcoin and in cryptocurrencies. But it's not just about Bitcoin because this article is also talking about the blockchain, which is the technology behind Bitcoin. So the blockchain is the one which is enabling this type of um, investment to be available. So um, let me see, Demo democratizing, that's another article. The 250 million property development project will eventually feature 1,133 studios. So this is even before some of them were sold. So this is even an older, um, an old article, but on the same um, on the same project that we're talking about, okay? So the future of property development may be in Bitcoin. We don't know, but this is a first, yeah? Then the next one 
in introduction to blockchain the key legal issues now, I'm not gonna go through that one I want this one which talks about blockchain and then registries are they the records of the future this one is 28th September 2017 so about two months ago blockchain is in essence a digital database or ledger distributed across a network of computers so that's the blockchain the records are protected by cryptography and are therefore protected against human error editing and removal read our introduction to the Bitcoin note for a fuller explanation the versatility of blockchain means it is being widely considered as a way to manage financial transactions asset transfers and regulatory obligations in particular blockchain is now seen by many as the future of land registration so when you talk about what's happening in Zimbabwe with land or what's happened with the distribution of land and the fact that there is multiple ownership of, of land that would never happen if the land registry was on a blockchain okay because you would need uh, the collusion of all the people on the blockchain all the people on the blockchain uh, to agree to the corruption which we know is endemic now where there is multiple farm ownership okay so uh, the blockchain would get rid of that and when we talk about the awarding of 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 um, of, um, of title deeds to raw areas or any other property for that matter if it is on a blockchain it is more secure it is more authentic it is more difficult to forge and so corruption could be a thing of the past and it would unlock the it would unlock uh, the value which is in those properties and would make sure that the uh, the properties can enter into the mainstream economy I know there are people who are worried that banks would buy off the properties because if there is title uh, they could trick the villagers into getting loans which they can't pay back and then take but the government can always put up a, a law to say this type of property cannot be used for this type of activity can, or cannot be expropriated if there is um, if there is um, if the person is struggling to pay they can always put a law to protect um, that type of property so I think we should not worry about implementation but we can look at ways in which we can make the implementation uh, even more successful but the main point here is that we have a system which we can use um, to record the uh, or to put the registration of these properties and this system is called the blockchain and this system is already being used in other places so it's not like we are trying something which has not been done already but we are implementing something which has already been done look at that uh, firstly it has potential to greatly reduce property fraud at a time when this has become a growing concern even for the for Her Majesty's land registry okay so it is the future of land registries and we need to find out exactly how we can implement this okay so blockchain technology also under underpins smart contracts which are programmable contracts that self-execute so a programmable contract will self-execute uh, that means uh, if you have a contract and um, let's say you've paid for something uh, and the blockchain is made aware that you've paid it means that a smart contract would self-execute and give you title to that piece of property that you paid for without having to go through lawyers and stuff like that so the blockchain is basically getting rid of the uh, of of, um, of third parties because it is the third parties which have been making money out of people who are struggling because they have been acting as the trustees or the as the as the point of trust between two untrusting parties so if you're buying a house for example you have to go through lawyers and banks because 
you and the, and the property developer cannot come to an agreement which is binding except if you go through the brokers and the banks and the lawyers and stuff like that okay property lawyers so that is where the problem is if you're renting your house out you might want to use um, you might want to use uh, a, a, a pr property management company okay uh, because you and the and, and and the tenant cannot trust each other to be able for, for the tenant to be able to pay you your rentals on time and every time okay so that's blockchain and land registries uh, and basically they are going to be the um, the record of the future is already happening in Ukraine it's happened the government has entered into a partnership with a blockchain provider and pass a new law to allow foreign ownership of real estate in the hope that foreign investment will drive up a market that has fallen by 70 percent since 2008 so that's in ukraine and the republic of georgia has already agreed to use blockchain to validate all government related property transactions since its launch in february 2017 georgia's blockchain provider has helped implement property registration and has registered more than a hundred thousand documents in Sweden. Blockchain could save the Swedish taxpayer of a hundred million by speeding up transactions, reducing paperwork, and minimizing fraud. This is an example of blockchain being utilized by an already well-established, competent land registry. And wait for it: in Africa, Ghana, and various Indian states. Are also considering blockchain despite the example of Sweden and England and Wales arguably the greatest benefits are likely to be enjoyed by countries where land holdings have less certain ownership and fraud is more common however blockchain will not remove the issue of incorrect data and the requirement for clean inputs so just because uh, we are using the blockchain does not mean we remove the issue of incorrect data being entered and the requirement for clean input. So we still need to make sure that the implementation stage is free of this uh, of the incorrect data and also make sure that we require that there are clean inputs into the database. It will be necessary for countries with no central registries to devise a system for agreeing what data is to be entered onto the blockchain. So you don't really have to enter everything onto a blockchain. You can decide what you want to enter. But the, I think the, the main thing is that you have a system which is able to function in a decentralized manner, which means you do not have uh, to worry about um, a third party who can be untrustworthy or stuff like that. Okay, so that's uh, that one is done. Let's see what this one is about. Blockchain applications in the public sector. So we're going to talk about this on another occasion because this one is related to land, but this one is mainly talking about government departments, what they can do. Okay, so an example here is asset registry, which is what we're talking about with the land and stuff like that. So all in transactions in Dubai to be conducted through I think we've looked at this already on two occasions so there's no need uh, to talk about this one but if all in transactions are to be conducted through the blockchain okay that means something the other article was talking about the use of Bitcoin which is this one here the Aston Plaza apartments okay Sweden trials uh, blockchain for land registry we've also uh, managed to speak about this one in a previous article so uh, just to look at the introduction Sweden's land registry authority Lantmateria has put blockchain's promises of transparent and tamper-proof transaction records to the test by implementing a padded system for recording property related transactions so I would suggest that for a country like Zimbabwe, you can start with just one street or just one uh, small suburb, you know, start with that and see how that goes. 
um, and, and put that on a blockchain and see how it works, okay? Then if you are happy with how you have been able to do that, then you can always expand it to the rest of the country. But basically, this is a way to, um, to make sure that we have, um, we have security of ownership so that uh, the, the government cannot just come and, uh, ex and take your property away. Uh, because uh, then this time you've got, uh, you can prove that you have the title. The problem now is, even if you get title deeds, yeah, the title deeds may be fraudulent because there are many people that have been sold land which already belong to somebody else, and then they just get some fake paperwork uh, as title deeds. But if it was on the blockchain, it is more difficult to forge, okay? So... I suggest that we start thinking about this. I'm not saying let's implement this tomorrow or next week or in 10 years time, even if it's in 15, 20 years time, but let's start having a conversation about it now. Okay, it might even be sooner than we think because if they, if Ghana is successful in implementing uh, the, the, the blockchain, then we too can do that. An Indian state wants to use blockchain to find land ownership fraud. Okay, so there is another story from CNBC. And an Indian state wants to use blockchain to fight land ownership fraud. So this one, India's land ownership system is apparently fraud with fraud. So one state is exploring the application of blockchain technology to make it more transparent. Okay, so the government of An Andhra, Pradesh has partnered with Swedish startup Chromaway to build its blockchain-based solution. Distributed ledger technology allows data to be stored in vast groupings which are encrypted and tamper-proof if it is, it is maintained across a network of computers around the world and there's no central authority to oversee. So it's important that there is no central authority because if there's a central authority, it means the system can be targeted by hackers. But if it's a network of computers around the world, it's difficult for hackers to compromise because in order to hack the system, they would need to hack all of the computers which are on that network simultaneously, okay? Uh, and they would all have to agree to the hacking. So every person with a computer which is maintaining those records would have to agree to that hacking for that hacking to take place. It's like going into Harare and breaking into every household simultaneously so that if you fail to break into one of them, all the, all the others will not, uh, will not, we, we, will, you will not be breaking into any of them. You have to break into all the houses all at the same time. So that's the same thing with the technology of the blockchain. It is, corruption proof okay the system is rife with corruption so that's as the uh the pradesh the the andhra pradesh fraud is rampant and disputes over titles often end up in court matters related to land and property make up about two-thirds of all civil cases in the country so chroma was already piloted a blockchain project in sweden focused on the process of buying and selling real estate this time it wants to combine the features of a traditional land registry database with that of blockchain technology. Guys, if you have questions, please do ask. I'm just checking to see here. Um, okay, these are the guys who are watching. Jonathan Siwa is watching. Um, Enoch, Koto, Spencer, Fernando, Simon. Um, Ignatius and Solomon. Guys, if you have questions and if I can answer them, I will do my best to answer them. Um, but I thought that maybe I should bring this up because Simon, for example, Simon, you've been talking about how we need to give uh, title, title deeds to our rural population, which comprises 70%, and most of it is dead capital. 
because and it's been financially excluded and so we need to bring them onto the mainstream economy. So one of the solutions that I am offering, which I've been looking at for the past few weeks, is the issue or the technology of the blockchain. Okay, And um, just to give you an, an example of what blockchain is, Bitcoin is one example of an application which is running on the blockchain. But it is not the only application which... Um, which which is built on the blockchain. There are other applications like property management, for example, land registry. We can put that on a blockchain. So Bitcoin is just a financial application or a banking application, but we also have other applications uh, like the ones I'm talking about here uh, with land. Okay, so... Let's see if there's another article. I had quite a few articles today. So Chrome Away is actually... Nah, I don't think I need to... The land registry in the blockchain test bad. So, yeah, so this is the, the, the Chrome Away application, uh, which is based on the blockchain. And you can find this, if you can Google this, you can find this and read it. Then I've got uh, Chrome, uh, so now this is the same thing, Chrome Away, Blockchain, Smart Contract, Land Registry, Real Estate, the basic program, print, while listening to Chrome Away, blah, blah, blah. Chrome Away first. So in 2012, Alex Mira, Mizahi, Mirahi of Misrahi of Chrome Away creates the first system to transfer financial assets via blockchain. 2014 Chrome Away issued the first bank paid asset on the on the Bitcoin blockchain together with LHV Bank. In 2016 Chrome Away uh, completes the first blockchain project with a national government. So a blockchain in a nutshell, a database that can be used by parties that don't fully trust each other. So issue of trust. So the blockchain is actually um, it's been dubbed the trust machine or the trust protocol, how the technology behind Bitcoin could change the world, and I think it's changing the world. A middleman is not needed, so that lowers costs and it lowers risks. Additional benefits are resilient and auditability. So it's, a, it's good for auditing. One of the problems that we have in Africa and in many other places is the issue of accountability because we have systems which can be compromised. We need all these guys. We need to trust. So our trust has been placed in all these guys. But look, these are the guys who are investing in blockchain technologies because they know that they are not trusted and that they are going to lose the business to anyone who is going to use blockchain. So they are actually coming up with their own... They are actually... Uh, investing in blockchain technologies, which means they will soon be using them, okay? So the traditional way is that you need a third party, yeah? And the two ways, the new way is that you don't need a third party. So, yeah, so you can also, um, you can download and um, play around with, this right is there anything else here I think we've looked at that Sweden's well we've talked about Sweden uh, is inching towards reality that was in April 2017 so obviously this came to pass uh, land registry a blockchain use case explode let me see if we've not looked at this so yeah so we've talked about this already Georgia Sweden Ukraine Ghana was also there. Um, as for the benefit of a blockchain-based land registry, look to Haiti. Okay, so Haiti is one of them, um, which after it had, I think Haiti went through some kind of a cyclone or a natural disaster. Then uh, properties were all over the place after that. But the government decided to uh, then... Uh, implement a blockchain-based land registry which was able to correct or to, to correct the records of some of, of 
the properties before and after. If you look at Zimbabwe, we've had Operation Rambatswina, we've had um, the, uh, the, the expropriation of farms, and we've had uh, people living in the rural areas without title deeds. So those are some of the things which I think we can we can use this blockchain technology for. Okay, so let's look at Haiti, and uh, there are still people fighting over whose land is whose. When disaster struck, all of their records were on paper, that being if they were written down at all. So there are problems there. But imagine if this was on a blockchain, then uh, they would not have had this problem. Hedman argued that with a blockchain-based registry employing a network of distributed databases as a way to facilitate data exchange, the monumental headache associated with the recovery effort would cease. Right, so you can read through this. You can read through this. What I'll try to do is put all of these uh, links, okay? Um, when I finish, I'll just put them in the comments section. Okay, then uh, that's physics. Cube is transferred between atomic gas and a crystal. So this is for another, um, this will be for another day. Okay guys, so thank you for listening. I've come to the end. Let me just check if there are any questions. And no questions today. Okay, so let me check again here. I see there is um. Okay, uh, this is just a tagging. Okay, guys, so thank you. So what I'll do, as soon as I finish now, I'm going to post this on YouTube so that it's available for anyone. Um, you can share this particular video uh, to see what other people think, but it's a solution to a problem which I think we have. And I think the problem is that we've got something like three or four different uh, economies in the same country. We've got the rural economy, which is really just function with the, within the rural areas. We've got an urban economy where people in the urban areas uh, are making ends meet. We've got the diaspora, and and then uh, after the diaspora, we've got the connected politicians. You know, if you look at some of the houses of the politicians, then you begin to wonder whether we are living in four different countries where we have the diaspora, we have the politicians, then we have the rural population, and then we have the people in the cities who are struggling to make ends meet. So the idea is to bring, to consolidate all of these economies, okay, into, into a functioning unit. And I think blockchain is well on the way to achieving that. So thank you again for listening. I will see you uh, in tomorrow's video.